I'd like to call the uh, May 21st, 2019 City Council meeting to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. During our city council meetings, uh, we always have an open podium inv invitation, and the, um, the opportunity for Eden Prairie residents to address the city council on issues related to Eden Prairie city government uh, happens before each council meeting. Typically, it's the first and third meeting, uh, first and third Tuesday of each month from 6.30 to 6.55 in the council chamber. If you wish to speak at open podium, please contact the city manager's office at 952-949-8412 by noon of the meeting date with your name, phone number, and subject matter. If time permits, after scheduled speakers are finished, the mayor will open the floor to unscheduled speakers an open podium is not recorded or televised. If you have questions about open podium, please contact the city manager's office. All right, we have some uh, proclamations and presentations. Uh, the first one is the 2018 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or the CAFR. Rick, Mr. Mr. Manager, uh, please uh, start us out. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, Minnesota state statutes requires that every city prepare an annual financial report and statements in accordance with uh, generally accepted accounting principles. We do that each and every year, <clears throat> excuse me, we're audited each and every year, and we get a report in our workshop, a, a full hour of reporting from our auditors from Clifton, Larson, Allen, and then we also have a presentation at our regular meeting, and then w the council is requested to move to accept our comprehensive annual financial report. So I'd like to introduce our auditors um, from Clifton Larson Allen, who will give the council a report prior to you taking action tonight. Thank you. Go ahead, guys. Thank you. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is John Lorenzini, and I was the manager on this year's audit. And I have with me Troy Gabler. He was the uh, senior associate on this year's audit. Okay, so just briefly, I wanted to talk about our audit team this year. Um, Chris Knopik was the principal on the engagement, and um, you can see the rest of our team here and their experience. So our team works exclusively with state and local government clients, um, mostly cities, school districts, and counties. Just briefly going over the audit results, we issued uh, what's known as an unmodified uh, or a clean audit opinion. Um, this is the best opinion you can get. It means that the city's financial statements were prepared uh, in accordance with accounting statement uh, guidance and there were no material misstatements. As part of planning our audit, we also review the city's internal controls and uh, if those controls indicate any weaknesses at the city, we report those to you as governance uh, on the city council. And there were no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies, we're pleased to report. Uh, the city has done a very good job of segregating duties and uh, building checks and balances and review procedures into the, uh, the finance department. As part of our audit, we also uh, complete the Minnesota Legal Compliance Checklist. This is a checklist that the state auditor issues every year with all of the state statutes that apply to cities. And we complete that checklist and also report to you if there's any uh, legal compliance issues that we've noted. And there was nothing to report this year. I'll turn it over to Troy. I'll just cover some of the um, results of some of the major funds of the cities here quick. Um, we did have uh, $2.1 million in revenues um, in excess of the budget for the general fund in the current year. It's about 5%. Um, that was mostly due to um, an increase in building and permitting revenue um, and a uh, good collection rate on taxes. Uh, expenditures were $242,000 under budget, about 1%. Um, for a city this size, it's, it's very positive. Um, it's very good to be that close. 
uh, that's mostly made up of administrative expenditures, um, community development, fire, police, and public works. Um, so this allowed the city to have a $2 million increase in fund balance for 2018. Um, now this was an expected increase for the city. They had um, paid off debt in previous years and so they had used their cash reserves and fund balance um, in previous years to do that. And so this is a way to kind of reestablish their stabilization fund in the current year. Moving on to uh, the water fund. Um, operating revenues increased 7.3% from 2017. Uh, usage was slightly up. Um, the major uh, change there was the rate increase of 4.7%. Um, that fund has $13 million in cash and investments. The city has a goal of $12 million as a cash reserve. Um, these reserves are used to ensure that they can maintain the systems and replace items as needed um, and in line with their capital improvement plan. Wastewater fund, the operating revenues increased 8.4% from 2017. Uh, again, the usage decreased 0.8%. However, the rate increased 8%. Um, they have $5.8 million in cash investments and a $4.9 million expectation for a cash reserve goal. For the stormwater fund, operating revenues increased 15%. Um, this was uh, in due entirely to the 15% rate increase in 2018. Uh, there's $2.6 million in cash compared to a goal of $3.7 million cash in reserve. Um, they are work the city is working very well towards ensuring they have that cash in the fund. Um, and this fund is now able to dis cover all of its operating costs and depreciation. The liquor fund had sales of two point, increased 2.7%. Uh, the liquor fund itself was able to provide $800,000 towards capital improvement and maintenance for the city. Um, and they also have a gross profit percentage of 26.9%, which is uh, head of the seven county metro average of 26%. So they are definitely operating effectively and efficiently. All right, uh, our next slide here, this is looking at the uh, estimated market values for the city uh, going back to 2009. And just a few things to highlight here, uh, comparing to 2009, it was a uh, $662 million increase. And the increase in market value from 2017 to 2018 was approximately uh, $337 million. And looking at the recovery, if you look all the way back at uh, 2009 on the left, um, looking back at the peak in 2009, um, we've now surpassed that peak by $109 million. So the recovery is made it all the way back to 2009 and gone beyond that uh, market value. And then 2019 continues to show improvements up to uh, $10.7 billion. This next slide uh, is looking at the, uh, the city's tax capacity and the tax capacity rate. And uh, if you look at the tax capacity rate, you can see kind of the inverse relationship here between the tax capacity and the tax capacity rate. And in calculating this, the, uh, the net levy we used includes general fund, uh, capital, and debt service levy. This next slide shows the, uh, the tax, amount of tax paid on a median home value by city. And uh, you can see that Eden Prairie, uh, towards the left there, is in the lower half of taxes paid for the single value home. And um, the other cities here on the chart that are being compared to are um, cities in the Minnesota Legislative Commission, the MLC. That's one of my favorite slides, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> This next slide is looking at the city's uh, revenue per capita, uh, so using population. And on the left there, uh, we're comparing to statewide averages for cities with a population between 20,000 and 100,000. And that's kind of a big range, but uh, it gives you a little bit of something to compare yourself to. So looking at um, per capita revenues, they were within $3 of prior year. and. Uh, Eden Prairie's per capita revenues are $66 more than cities of comparable size. And we did break out on this, uh, this chart here the um, 
LGA from intergovernmental revenues. And that's just to show that um, Eden Prairie has not received LGA since 2003, and some of the other cities have, obviously. All right, this next slide, this is uh, essentially the same slide, but just looking at the expenditure side instead of revenues. And looking at expenditures per capita, um, if we just look at the current expenditures, um, you can see that Eden Prairie, the current expenditures per capita are $96 more than uh, other similar size cities. And this is primarily due to the city's uh, parks and recreation, public safety, and community development programs. Um, but also, if you look at the total expenditures per capita, um, Eden Prairie is lower. And that's due to um, the lower debt service. Uh, if you look at 2017, you'll see kind of a, a spike in the city's debt service expenditures. And that was partially due to the, uh, the 2007A public facilities lease revenue bonds, which were paid off in 2017. So you can see that coming back down in 2018. And uh, so it's good to see that the city is spending less on debt service than other comparable cities. Some other highlights and accomplishments. Um, so the financial statements and the uh, state auditor reporting form will both be submitted by the uh, June 30th deadline. We're obviously well ahead of that. The uh, comprehensive annual financial report, or CAFR, will be submitted to the GFOA before that deadline. And um, I should also mention, too, that um, the fact that you're preparing a, a CAFR means that the city is holding itself to a, a higher financial standard than just your basic financial statements. So it's also great to see that the city is doing that. And uh, the city has received the CAFR award every year since 1990. So that's great to see the um, city has a high expectation for financial reporting. Also, um, using some recent statistics that we have, um, just comparing the bond rating of the city uh, Eden Prairie is a AAA rating, and uh, out of 357 cities analyzed within Minnesota, uh, only 28 have a AAA bond rating from either Moody's or S&P. So that's also a, a great um, thing to see and not very common. And that's what keeps our keeps our bond our bond rates low. So when we do borrow money, that uh, the city the residents are paying less to service that debt because we get great rates. So that's really important to us. And uh, just some other um, emerging issues that we like to bring up. We like to talk about upcoming accounting standards, just to make the council aware of. Uh, what's going to be coming up in the next year's financial reports. So next year, we do have one new accounting standard. Uh, it's GASB 84. And it has to do with fiduciary activities. Um, so this is going to change the presentation of your agency funds. Um, those statements will look a little bit different and will require a little bit more disclosure. And um, some things that were previously in your agency funds will no longer be. They'll have to be brought into uh, the other governmental funds. And as well, agency funds will now be called custodial funds. So you'll see those changes reflected in your report next year. And the following year, in 2020, the uh, GASB 8, 8, or, excuse me, 87 lease standard is coming out. That will be effective. And that's going to change the way you treat your leases. Um, operating leases, where you just kind of pay your lease expense every month um, is going away, and you're now going to have a um, debt booked and a right to use leased asset in your capital assets as well. So um, that'll be in 2020 that you'll see some changes in the way leases are accounted for. Any uh, questions we could answer? So. Council, we just heard uh, this report in much greater detail at our workshop, but uh, do you, any of you have any questions? Just Council a comment. Ryan. Thank you. This is a great news. The way you present sounds like very sad. Just want to tell the audience and the residents is in, we are the lowest fourth in terms of taxes. We have AAA bond rating. Um, 
our our all aspect of audit we are clean this is great proud to be sitting here proud to be part of this city and and uh, great work by the staff and thank you agreed yep. any other comments mark i'd like to uh, second what uh, councilman narayan just said that the residents of eden prairie should be very proud of the previous councils and the hard work of the staff the city's well run it's well run and it's going to continue to be that way and that's our assurances thank you thank you yes and thank you uh, to the audit team we appreciate your good work and uh, it's good to see that you know all of the things that we think and believe are really being done and they're they're verified by you and that's important to us to know and we know that Sue Achiever and Tammy and the rest of the team do a fantastic job with all of our staff so like uh, like the other members on the council, I too uh, thank all of our staff for the great work that they do and really appreciate everything because it makes a big difference. So thank you so much for the presentation tonight. Look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have another presentation tonight and it- Move the motion. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. We have a motion. Uh, we need a motion. I'd, I'd like to say thank you to the staff and move to accept the 2018 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. A second that. Okay, we have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, we have a, an approved uh, CAFR. Thank you. All right, we have another presentation tonight, and that is the open business presentation. And we have uh, someone here to talk about that. So Rob S Smolin, please come up. Great, thank you. Uh, Rob Smolin is my name. I'm the business advisor for the Open to Business program. First of all, congratulations on a well-run city. That was a very impressive uh, audit that, uh, that was just presented. Um, I'd like to go through, just give you a little bit of a brief uh, uh, description of what the Open to Business program is, show some of our clients, and then I have a short video at the end just uh, that Hennepin County produced to give you a better idea of what we do. So uh, Open to Business is a program that enables cities and counties to extend their entrepreneurial efforts by providing, we provide free one-on-one -on -one business consulting services to anybody in the community who either is a resident a business or anybody who wants to open up a business in Eden Prairie. Um, we help them with all sorts of things, business planning, uh, business feasibility analysis, which I'll get into a little bit. We started the program in 2010 with one city in Brooklyn Park. Um, since then, we've grown to over 135 different communities. We're pretty much in every county now except Ramsey County, but we're, we're in negotiation right now. So what we found is that cities and counties really found this to be a very effective way of providing entrepreneurial resources to small businesses, mom, pop operations, and, and really helping people properly evaluate their business idea. So um, my business consulting goals are really initially to be a trusted advisor. You know, that's the first step so that I can tell the person I'm sitting across from the honest truth. They'll believe me. I have no stake in the game. I just want to help them get to the point where they make the right decision whether to go into business or not. Um, another goal is really to bring a third party objective view of their business. And then after doing this for over 20 years now and seeing probably over 5,000, 6,000 entrepreneurs, I realize that most entrepreneurs are just starting, they don't have a good handle on the financial management end of things. So my, my goal is really to demystify that financial management part of their business. From the business plan to you know, accessing capital to ongoing operations. Um, you know, the types of assistance I was saying, business feasibility analysis, to help them with cash flow management, loan packaging you know if someone needs to go to a bank they don't have the right proper documentation they can come to me and i can get them all set up i i speak bank so that that i know what they're looking for we do marketing strategic planning um and something i always say overall business therapy uh just really again try to help them make the best decision i i go through this little business feasibility process um, for, for me, any business, if it's to succeed, it's got to be solving a problem. So 
Um, this is just the guideline. Let's identify the problem that's out there, then develop the solution. Most entrepreneurs go right to the solution without figuring out if there is a problem to solve. So um, once we get those two boxes, then I help them, let's create a customer profile. What is your, who is your target mar market? Or who are your target markets? I help them, I say, create 10 future transactions, write a case study on each one of them, and then hopefully from that we can have a better idea of who the perfect customer is. Then I tell them, now you gotta try to validate that solution surveys, interviews, anything that would work with that individual entrepreneur. We also, in addition to providing free one-on-one -on -one consulting, we do have our own financing programs. We are considered a subordinated lender, uh, a gap financier, when uh, an entrepreneur can't get all their financing from a bank. I ultimately want to help people decide or figure out what is their true capital need, and then we come up with a strategy on how best to access those funds. And, you know, the funds could be with, with the bank only, or we can come in if the bank can't do all of it. So we have three different types of uh, funding uh, programs. One is our microloan uh, program, and that's up to $25,000 for retail or service businesses. Sometimes we can go up to 50 for manufacturing businesses. These are primarily for startup companies. This is where no bank is involved. So it's a little bit higher risk. That's why we limit on how much we can, we can do. Some of the examples we've done is this is a small uh, boutique in Brooklyn Park that started a number of years ago. We, I compiled three nonprofit lenders to get this 24-year-old uh, woman from Nigeria to open up a, a very nice uh, uh, women's boutique store in Brooklyn Park. Um, this kind of launched open to business because we got a lot of press out of this and a lot of other counties uh, saw what we were doing and they wanted to join the program. So um, another one is, we, this was a, a small loan that we did. I was working with this woman for oh, a number of years before we even lent money to her. She's created and marketed a moisturizing hand sanitizer, which is available at a lot of markets all around the Twin Cities. We, uh, she had a, wanted to get to, into Bath and & Beyond, and she needed an initial capital influx to, to buy inventory uh, to produce the product. So you'll see her in, a, in the video that I'm gonna show soon. This is a small restaurant bakery in, in um, uh, Minneapolis, and we helped him move from a very smaller space to a brand new constructed uh, location on 37th and Nicolet. Real good community entrepreneur. The other part, the other loan we have is what's called a participated loan. This is when a bank is involved and they can't do all of it. And here's some examples. Um, um, we can we can provide up to 50% of the total project as long as the bank is, is matching it. Again, we're in a subordinated position, meaning we're the second to get payment, we're the second to collect. Banks love us for that. You know. um, here's a, an example, Glam Doll Donuts. They started a number of years ago on Nicollet. Now they have a second location in Northeast and they're, they, just, they knew their brand. Man, I, I gotta be, tell you though, when they first started, their donuts weren't that great, but the brand was fantastic. I mean, you yeah. walked in there and, they gave you some entertainment, so. But their donuts are better now. <laughs> um, and we have a third one is real estate gap financing. This is where a small real estate purchase, or it could be a big real estate purchase with the gap financing, and, and let's say at the last minute the appraisal comes back short. Um, we can fill that gap. Again, we're the last lender to make it make it work. So um, this example, this product, project was probably a $4.5 million project uh, up in Anoka County. And the appraisal came back $300,000 short. And they already exhausted everything the bank could do, everything that the SBA 504 company could do. We came in and filled that gap and made it happen. So uh, then we have permanent real estate finance financing. This is on, again, smaller real estate loans where we are that permanent second lender in it. In, in the deal. Again, we're subordinated. And this is the latest one that we did, um, Lat 14 in Golden Valley. This is a restaurant, entrepreneurs who had a restaurant in Brooklyn Park, they wanted to own real estate, they purchased this building and turned, this was an old Perkins restaurant, <coughs> and turned it into a very, very nice uh, Asian eatery and doing quite well. So we were, um, 
the, it was just the bank and our organization that funded it. So, and then this was the first big loan that we did for a restaurant. This is Travail uh, in Robbinsdale. Again, helped a, they built a brand new building and we were the permanent financing in that too, second to the bank. This was just a, a helped a, a home-based memory care facility by their house that they were renting in, and then they expanded to another house. So just quick examples and help the optometrist buy a uh, office condo here. We weren't in the deal, we just helped them get prepared to go in front of a, a bank. So I wanted to go over some of the results in Eden Prairie. This is from 2014 to 2018. We assisted 115 entrepreneurs here, and either they were residents or businesses or anybody wanted to open up a business here. We approved 15 loans equaling $608,000. That leveraged another $4.8 million in capital. And then we retained those, loan, those businesses that we did loans for retained or created 222 jobs, which is a pretty good number. And then we provided 753 hours of technical assistance. So that was just for from 2014 to 2018. Overall, last year, we um, assisted 935 entrepreneurs, did 69 loans equaling almost $3 million, and that leveraged another $23 million in capital, and then 460 jobs. So Eden Prairie was pretty, has been pretty active uh, in the last few years. So opening up a business to me, the journey is the destination. It's like running a marathon or taking a long bike ride, and what we try to do is just help entrepreneurs prepare for their journey and hopefully provide enough cushion over the cliff that will they can that can absorb some of the ups and downs of opening up a business. So um, I've got this video that I'd just like to end with. Hennepin County produced it, uh, interviewing some of our clients that we've worked with. Let's see if I can do this techno technology wise. Oh, there we go. We are Thank you. open to business. <laughs> has been a true lifeline to businesses like Pimento Jamaican Kitchen. It sees you then more than a dollar sign. They see you as an entrepreneur with a great business concept that just needs that little support, recognizing that what we are offering added unique value to not only community, but also was a great business model. How didn't they help me would probably be the better way to put it. Lent a hand with just things that I would have never known about. Open a business with somebody that came in and at least uh, told me that I didn't know those things and to get prepared for them. Had Hennepin County not been there covering everybody in my search, I would have lost that service. And to me, that could have been detrimental to me even opening the business. Open to Business has been just a phenomenal organization to work with. And so they're flexible, they're open, they're wonderful. And I truly believe they want to see me successful. But Open to Business is more about a personal relationship and a real genuine desire to help small businesses succeed. For anybody that's open to business, thinking about opening a business, or have a business that's open and maybe looking to expand, any of those would be a great reason to visit with Open to Business. It is a concept to help small businesses succeed. Um, it's about relationship building, it's about opportunities, and it's about networking and helping a small business grow organically. Open to Business has made it so much easy for anyone to be able to apply and get resources and the help they need to start their business, no matter what it is. Open to Business is the right place for everyone who's passionate about their business. We are Open, open to, to business. business. We are. We are. We are Open to Business. better hearing from the clients than just me, but uh, any questions? Any counsel, any questions for, uh, for Rob? Pete? I'd love to make a comment. Uh, being an entrepreneur, and we were talking outside, and the technologists, and I really want to say thank you, um, helping all these people in Eden Prairie and, and neighboring cities. 
it's a great uh, service and it is when you start something beginning it's struggle you have so many unknown things but you may have a product idea but you don't know the finance you don't know how to market it you don't know how to social media so many things and uh, you and others helping in our city is great and thank you oh thank you very much for those comments Anyone else have any questions? Otherwise, I've got a couple of questions. Um, how many people are employed by Open to Business? How many people do you have helping our businesses? Well, we, my, the organization is the Metropolitan Consortium of Community Developers, and we are two parts of that. We are a membership organization of local neighborhood groups and nonprofit housing developers and community development corporations, and the other part is the Open to Business um, section. So in the Open to Business section, we have seven business advisors who are all geographically placed and then we have um, a few people in loan support we have a full service loan um, uh, support team that uh, originates collects closes all loans so and speaking of loans where what is the source of that funding where did those loans that money come from a variety. Um, we are a CDFI, a Certified Development Financial Institution, so we get some funding from the Treasury Department of, of the federal government. We have state monies, part of the Emerging Entrepreneur Program. We have a number of equity equivalent loans from private financing institutions, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, a number of small banks, where they lend money to us at a lower interest rate, and we lend <coughs> out higher, and they s satisfy their community reinvestment requirement. And we have our own net assets, too that we can lend. Great, well, uh, I know businesses are very important to Eden Prairie. We have over 2,500 businesses in Eden Prairie, some very large uh, uh, Fortune, Fortune yeah. 500 companies uh, and plus, uh, that, but we have many, many small businesses. So thank you for all your efforts and thank you for, uh, for developing our businesses because that's what makes our, our community a great community to live in, one of the things. Great. So thank you so much, Rob. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak in front of you. All right, we have um, a couple of uh, presentations that are actually uh, some awards. So, um, Mr. Getchow, would you like to uh, start introducing those? Yes, I'll start by introducing our uh, Parks and Recreation Director, uh, Mr. Lothammer. Your Honor, Council Members, uh, tonight we do have uh, three awards that we are gonna group together for you, but I will uh, introduce the first two to start with. Um, each year, our staff, along with staff from other cities across the state of Minnesota, has the opportunity to submit award applications for projects or efforts that we think are award-worthy. We have uh, had the uh, uh, pleasure this year to be selected for two of those awards. And what I'm really proud of with those two awards especially is it really highlights our efforts to be inclusive, to build community, and to also reach all of the people across our city. And I think when you hear more about what these projects were, that will ring true to you as well. Tonight with me, I have Amy Peterson. You'll recognize Amy. She's representing our state association, but Amy is also a resident of Eden Prairie. So she's been here before to help present these awards on behalf of the state association. And also tonight, uh, Lori Brink, our recreation services manager, and Valerie Verley, our community center manager. So I'll ask them to come forward. They're gonna tell you more about the awards and the projects that then won those awards. And I'll invite your honor to uh, come down and, and help accept those awards as well. Would you like to have the motion before we do that? If you'd like to, yes. Yeah. Okay, why don't I'll accept a motion. Good. I move to accept the Minnesota Recreation and Parks Association Award of Excellence for the 2018 series of events entitled to People First, a Community Celebration of Culture. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I'll come down. Oh, good evening. Um, thank you for, um, for having, for allowing me to come here tonight. My name is Amy Peterson. Um, again, I am a resident of this great city of Eden Prairie, so it's always a joy to come here and present these awards. Um, but I am here tonight on behalf of the Minnesota Recreation Park Association. 
tonight we are going, um, before I kind of talk a little about the awards, um, I just want to give you a little bit of background about the Awards of Excellence program. The Minnesota Recreation and Park Association was formed in 1937 to foster the growth and development of the parks and recreation profession throughout the state. Presently, we have nearly 900 professional corporate board commission, student, and retiree members throughout the state. Members of the association come from municipal, county, state, district, commercial, and private agencies. The Minnesota Recreation and Park Associ Association office is located in Fridley. The MRP Awards Committee was created in 1987 with the purpose of acknowledging individual members and agencies for their excellence in the fields of parks and recreation and leisure services. Awards Committee members represent a cross-section of the association members from the state of Minnesota. The Awards Committee feels it's important to increase awareness of and, appre and appreciation for the excellent parks, trails, facilities, recreation programs, and services that are occurring in Minnesota. And that is why the Awards of Excellence program was created. The Awards of Excellence program is an annual program of the Minnesota Recreation and Park Association that was solely created to recognize agencies and their staff for an exemplary project that was either implemented in 2018 or re received substantial revisions in 2018. MRPA members may nominate a project for an Awards of Excellence in seven different categories. Only the top scoring nominations are selected to receive an Awards of Excellence recognition. So on behalf of the MRP Awards Committee, it's my pleasure tonight to present not one, but two awards of excellence to the City of Eden Prairie and the Parks and Recreation Department for its winning project, the Passport to Fund Scholarship Program, and People Fest, a Community Celebration of Culture. And I also just want to thank the two um, staff here who nominated these programs, Lori Brink, and Valerie Verley. And Lori is going to come up and share a little bit about her project. Thank you, Amy. Your Honor, members of council, I'm Lori Brink. I'm the Recreation Services Manager here. And I want to thank the MRPA for this award and let you know that I'm accepting this award on behalf of a number of others. Even though this award is being given to our city's Parks and Recreation Department, uh, I accept it on behalf of all of the organizations and the volunteers that assisted with planning and delivering this program. Um, it was really a, a great inaugural year for this series of events. So during a full week in August, uh, there were presentations, book studies, performances, food, music, storytelling, all in celebration of the rich cultures that make up the city of Eden Prairie. It was truly a joint effort, and um, there were a lot of organizations and volunteers that either hosted an event, um, staffed a booth at our party, provided a presentation. Um, everyone really pulled together and planned this event and delivered this event as a collaborative. So I would like to publicly thank and recognize each organization that was a part of this. Eden Prairie Schools Community Ed Department, our city's own Human Rights and Diversity Commission, Eden Prairie Community Foundation, Eden Prairie Chinese Association, Hennepin County Library, Interfaith Circle, Strikers Cricket Club, Islamic Resource Center, Minnesota Tamil Sangam, Heritage Association of Romanian Americans, Mother's Tutoring Academy, Jawahir Dance Company, Academy of Russian Ballet, Somali Dance Troupe, Eden Prairie String Academy, Asian Indian Family Wellness, Hennepin County Child and Teen Checkups Program, School of Rock, and the Fortune Relief and Youth Empowerment Organization. So as you can see, we had a lot of participation and, and we're very pleased um, with, with the turnout and with the community's response. So I really would like to thank the council for your support and for your attendance at many of these events and participation. We look forward to celebrating again this year. It will be August 4th through the 13th, and our big party will be on Sunday, August 11th. We hope to see you all there. Lori, I just want to make a couple of comments, if I can. This is a proud moment for me, uh, personally. I know you're going to, Rick already told me that I know you're going to say something. Yes, it is. Uh, 
we thought of this idea around six, seven years ago from Human Rights and Diversity Commission when I was there. And I came up with the name People First. And it didn't have enough energy at that time. Then I went to the foundation, I brought up the idea again, and we didn't get the energy as well. Then third time that city took strong initiative with all these people brought together. And last year was an awesome, successful year. And it's a great event, and I keep on, every time and I tell you, and I see Molly and other people and said, this is gonna be thousands of people in a few years. It's a great event, and uh, thank you for leading the activity for the city, and also thanks for the award, it's well deserved. Thank you. I'm gonna turn it over to Valerie Verley. Thank you, Your Honor and Council Members, and thanks to Amy and the MRPA for these awards. Um, so it's my honor to present the Award of Excellence for the Passport to Fund Scholarship Program tonight. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware, Passport to Fund is a program that enables people to participate in the City of Eden Prairie Parks and Recreation programs who may otherwise be unable to due to financial constraints. The program's available to persons who live or work in the City of Eden Prairie and have a financial need. The program provides free access to open swim, open gym, and open skate at the Eden Prairie Community Center, and it also allows access to park and rec programs at a 50% reduction in fee. Um, so staff kind of uh, convened with me last year in 2018 to recognize that there was some kind of processy problems going on administratively and just felt like there was an opportunity to better serve our community members. So what we enacted was um, a few things, but most importantly, I think the ability to allow and allow for a better access online for our programs and to serve this group and this clientele in a way that we serve everyone else in the community. Um, to uh, really empathize with the humanity side of that and knowing that you know coming to the community center and asking to register for a reduced fee is, is not the easiest thing to do and recognizing that and being empathetic toward it. So what we were able to do was to bring the program online and they were allowed to register for programs um, for that purpose and really kind of viewing their customer experience was what we really tried to be intentional about. I believe we are achieving this more and more um, after having implemented it in 2018 because now in 2019 we're seeing that almost 50% of the people registering for programs are doing it online. Um, so we do feel it's very successful and we're very proud that we were able to not only make an administrative change, which is always a plus, um, but more importantly to better serve the community at large. So without further ado, it's uh, my honor to present this award to Your Honor and the Council. All right, I'm back for one other presentation of awards. Um, switching gears a little bit, it is my honor to present these awards to you tonight in recognition of Jasmine Ellingson, our aquatic supervisor. Um, she was recognized for a few awards by the American Red Cross recently, and we wanted to bring those to your attention tonight. Aside from hosting the state of Minnesota's only American Red Cross Academy in 2018, where Jasmine herself became a certified Red Cross water safety instructor trainer, and one of her aquatic staff members, Caitlin Bailey, was certified as a Red Cross lifeguard instructor trainer, Jasmine has led the charge in expanding our Learn to Swim lesson programming, ensuring as many youth and adults in the Eden Prairie community are given the opportunity to learn how to swim. We now offer far more swim lessons than our department's ever offered before. In fact, in 2018, we hosted 1,283 participants in our group swim lessons, serving six-month-olds all the way up to adults. And private lessons were also allowed and, and put in place to accommodate those that we couldn't. So instead of having long wait lists, we were able to get even more served um, in a total of about 1,500 people within the Eden Prairie community last year that we were able to serve. Um, for this, the city of Eden Prairie received a certification uh, from the Red Cross as a gold level learn to swim provider within our community. We hosted the second highest number of participants in the entire state, second only to the city of St. Paul. 
Um, the Learn to Swim program that our city provides helps to counteract a lot of staggering statistics about water safety. Children's uh, number one cause of death in children is drowning. And there's just a lot of risk factors around water safety that we really want to prevent by eliminating that fear and by teaching life saving skills. On a personal note, Jasmine has been an intricate part of making all this happen, has created a lot of quality programming, and has taken our aquatics programs to a new level by serving even more of the community than we had before. Um, we're very proud to have her as a leader on our staff and to present these awards to her tonight. Well, that's great work, and I know swimming in water safety is so important, especially in a, in a state where we have over 10,000 lakes. And so uh, I, I'm a strong believer that, that everyone should learn how to swim because you just never know when you might need it. So we appreciate all your efforts. Thank you so much. All right, uh, we had the presentation. I'd look for a motion. Move to accept the Minnesota Recreation and Parks Association Award of Excellence for a passport to fund scholarship program. Second. All right, a motion and a second. Any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the award uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. All right. And then we have, uh, then we have the motion, or we need a motion to accept the Red Cross Award. I move to accept the Red Cross Award presented to Jasmine Ellingson and Park and Recreation Department's Aquatic Program. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. <laughs> thank you so much. That was great. Uh, so thank you to staff and thank you uh, to everyone on this. We appreciate it. All right. Uh, look for a motion to uh, any changes to the agenda or um, I know. Uh, yeah, I'd like to add one item. Uh, is this really later on or right now? Oh, you want to do We'll do that under, uh, under council member reports. Okay. Um, any other things to add or change? All right, I'd look for a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we have a motion to approve the agenda. All right, um, minutes. So the last meeting on May 7th, uh, I look for a motion for both the, to approve the, the, county, the council workshop and the city council meeting um, I'm, held that same day. I move to approve the following city council minutes. Council workshop held Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. Council, city council meeting held Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or changes? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, we have approved minutes, thank you. All right, um, consent calendar. Look for a motion, or is there anything to pull? Move to approve items A through M on the consent calendar. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any, uh, anything further to discuss? Any questions on that for staff? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent calendar as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Moving on to, we don't have any public hearings tonight, so we're gonna move on to payment of claims. Look for a motion. I move approve, approval of payment of claim as submitted Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any, uh, any items to pull or question? 
Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. In roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Oh yeah, and a roll call. So. Council Member Freiberg. Aye. Council Member Narayan. Aye. Council Member Nelson. Aye. Acting Mayor Aho. Aye. All right, thank you. We have payment of claims. All right, let's move on to reports of council members. Council Member Narayan, you had an item you wanted to discuss. Well, thank you, uh, council member. Uh, one of the item that um, I notice uh, when I'm driving around in Eden Prairie, um, going from my house to my son's house, um, on the right side, there is a couple of uh, cable boxes and the power boxes. They are uh, rusted and pretty bad. So my wife actually brought this up to me and said, don't you guys can do something about this? Then afterwards, this funny thing is, uh, when I drive around, I started seeing more and more of rusty cable boxes and power boxes. So I talked to our uh, city manager and actually took a picture and sent to him and he's following up. I think it's one of the things I'd like to bring it up to the residents is that if you see a rusty power boxes and cable boxes in your neighborhood, please call your uh, cable company and call your uh, power company, ask them to make it a difference because it's pretty ugly as it is and then rusted and taped up is quite bad. So second part of the question I have is, is do we as a council or city has any aesthetic standard that we should have that kind of prevent this? Um, so that's the question. Sure. Manager Getchow, yeah, you want to comment absolutely. on that? Absolutely. So, you know, we do have some general provisions in our code you know, regarding the, the health and welfare and safety of our residents. and. Um, you know, we do have some aesthetic standards or policies that we have and, and that we can update. There is obviously the ability for these operators to be in our right of way. So, I mean, as we know, as we've talked about through uh, many discussions related to telecommunications issues and small cell issues, um, you know, we have to allow these entities to be in the right of way. But as Council Member Narayan said, there's also an expectation that they're that these um, the equipment is kept in in decent repair and condition and painted and 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 not rusting. So um, we went to push in some cases for them to to do this, but um, we have the ability to do that, and we can and will follow up. And as you said, I think. Um, residents can directly contact the utilities and ask that they um, paint or, or do what they need to do to keep the the boxes up to a reasonable condition and they can also contact the city as well but we'd also contact the utilities as we're doing on the request that you sent me thank you great thank you is that all you have that's all I have and just just to let our residents know um, the city does uh, use a tool called C click fix C click fix is a mobile application that you can run on your on your mobile smartphone and the nice thing about that application just go to either, any of your uh, your Play Store or uh, for your mobile device type but you can download that application it's a free application and with that application if you see something in the city that needs attention especially something that needs attention by the city and not necessarily by the power company or utility company you can take a picture of that and when you take a picture of that um, that item uh, it'll it'll geotag that item where the picture was taken so staff know exactly where the problem is and then you can send, submit that and when you submit that it automatically gets routed to the proper department within the city so the city can quickly see what the problem is with a picture and they know where it is and then they can have the right department take care of it so that's really a nice tool if any of you haven't had a uh, uh, chance to try that out I encourage you to try it out if you see something you want to get fixed. Like if there's a problem on one of the trails or any kind of thing like that, it works great. So any other, uh, any other business to come before the council on this meeting? If not, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn the city council meeting. Second. Oh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Council meeting is adjourned. Thank you.
Good job, Brad. Less than an hour. You did well. Less than an hour. <laughs>